In this first short lecture, I'm going to talk about nucleosome structure and chromatin folding. So the DNA in any one cell is about one and a half metres long. So how is it folded and organised inside the nucleus? So it's an organised structure and not just a big tangled mess of DNA. So the first level of folding is when the DNA is wrapped around balls of proteins. These are histone proteins and the DNA is wrapped twice around the outside of each ball to form a nucleosome. So a string of nucleosomes is often called a beads on a string form of chromatin or the 10 nanometer fibre. The next level of folding is the 30 nanometer fibre where these nucleosomes are squashed together. Then during the interface cell these uh, fibres are thought to be looped and formed into what are known as topologically associated domains. And then during metaphase, as I'm sure you're aware, the chromatin is very highly folded to form these metaphase chromosomes, which can be visualised during mitosis and meiosis. So going back to that first level of folding, the 10 nanometer chromatin fibre, so here's an electron micrograph picture where these little black dots, each of these is a nucleosome and you can see the linker DNA linking the nucleosomes together. So what is a nucleosome? So as I said uh, we have histone proteins in the middle and DNA round the outside. So there's four different types of core histones, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. And within the central part of the nucleosome there are two of each of these core histone proteins, making a total of eight proteins, which is known as an octamer. And around the outside is 146 base pairs of DNA, which is wrapped twice around this octamer. And this uh, X-ray crystallography structure is looking at the nucleosome from two different viewpoints, from uh, front on and from side on. So here you can see those two gyres of the DNA wrapped around that octamer of histone proteins. So looking at the structures of those core histone proteins, they have a similar fold in the middle consisting of three alpha helices which folds to form this histone fold. And then they have N-terminal tail which are largely unstructured and H2A and 2B have C-terminal tails. So the nucleosome comes together in this way, so first of all the two molecules of H3 and two molecules of H4 form a tetramer. DNA can be wrapped around this tetramer in a loose structure. And then we have two dimers, two H2A, H2B dimers, which bind at the front and the back of this tetramer to form that nucleosomal structure. This is just another view of that same X-ray crystallography picture showing the coloured histone proteins and the point about this one is that it shows the N-terminal tails. So these tails stick out from between the gyres of the DNA. Now we don't have structural information for these because they're in different positions and they don't fold to form something that the X-ray crystallography can detect. Um, but if these were extended they would stretch really quite a long way. We know the histone tails contact the linker DNA that links the nucleosomes to each other and they're also important for recruiting cofactors. They help to recruit proteins to the chromatin. So the next level of fo folding is this 30 nanometer fibre. Um, and this is an equilibrium to a large extent. So here again, we've got that electron micro micrograph picture of the 10 nanometer and then the 30 nanometer fibre. So for a long time, people thought this was a big helix or a solenoid of um, just a big spiral of nucleosomes going round and round. However, more recently, a range of different structural techniques has shown it's actually a zigzag, it's more of an accordion, and the accordion can be squashed tight or pulled out and extended. So again, we can see here in this electron cryo microscopy, these different nucleosomes in this sort of zigzag conformation. And here we have stereo views. So if you're someone who can cross your eyes, if you cross your eyes and focus just slightly behind or in front of this picture, you should be able to get a 3D single image in the middle, which will just give you a viewpoint of how this accordion shape is folding. And then as the monovalent salt is increased, you can see that this accordion is squashing up. 
And don't worry if you're not able to cross your eyes because um, you can still see it with the single views where uh, you can see the chromatin becoming more compact. This is just another viewpoint of that zigzag model with, this, with the nucleosomes uh, folding in and out of each other. So there's a fifth sort of histone called linker histone. Um, the most common linker histone is H1, but there's a H5 and there's other variants as well. So linker histones bind on the outside of the nucleosome, uh, near where the linker DNA enters and leaves the nucleosome. Um, and the tails of histone H1 are positively charged, so the positive tails of the linker histone interact with the negatively charged DNA and so can help to, to bind the DNA and, com and compact the chromatin. Um, so again, in these electron cryomicrographs, we have a nucleosome with um, the linker DNA. This is just a picture derived from the images. And in the presence of the linker histone, we can see that the linker DNAs are brought together. So instead of this big extended zigzag like that, the linker DNAs are brought together because that positively charged linker histone tails are binding and neutralizing the negative DNA of the linker DNA so it could be brought together and compacted. The last thing I wanted to tell you about in this section is um, a group of protein complexes called nucleosome remodeling enzymes. So nucleosome remodeling enzymes help do a variety of things. Um, and in this particular case, what we can see they're doing is repositioning the nucleosome on the DNA. So here is this complex uh, derived from uh, imaging technology. So you can see it's a very large complex with lots of proteins. So they can be two megadaltons, multi subunit complex, There's lots of proteins in there. They all use ATP and we can see in this situation, oh, sorry, in this situation, there are th uh, three DNA sequences that have mar been marked in blue and the presence of ATP and the remodeling complex, the relative position of that blue sequence has moved with respect to the nucleosome. And so you can see how maybe this blue sequence here was maybe difficult for a transcription factor to read and bind, but now it's been uh, released and is much more easily accessible. So there are a few different families of remodeling complexes. Switch, sniff and imitation switch are the two main families. Um, and within those complexes, the active subunits are known as BRG1 or BRM1. As I said, they use ATP to do this remodeling and they increase the access to DNA by transcription factors or nuclease enzymes or anything else that wants to bind to it. They can also be used to exchange histone variants, so there are some slightly different sequences of H3 or H2A, and so remodelers can swap in some of those different types of histones. They don't bind DNA themselves, they need to be recruited to chromatin, for example by a sequence-specific transcription factor that then recruits a nucleosome remodelling enzyme and helps to reposition the nucleosome on the DNA. So we've just got a little multiple choice question at the end of this section to make sure that you understood what I've been talking about.